Welcome to Table Talk Reviews. I'm Matt Mitchell. Let's take a look at Box Top Pinball Haunted House, a game that brings the pinball machine out of the arcade and onto your table. This is designed by Zach Connolly for two to four players and published by Panasaurus Games, who provided me with this copy. Let me show you how to play, and then I'll share my thoughts. To set up the game, place the boxes in this order with the matching number facing each other. Insert all the walls and obstacles matching the letters and direction of the arrows. It should look like this when finished. All three monsters have a space for their placement on each box. They will begin the game in the space circled in white. Medusa will start on the top level, Frank in the middle level, and Bob on the bottom level. Shuffle the magnifying glass tokens face down and place two on each level in the indicated outlines. Give each player four dice of their color. The other two dice can be set aside for when they shoot a bonus shot. Now you're ready to play. On your turn, you'll place one of your dice onto the launch pad and you can place it with whatever face up you think is beneficial. Then you'll flick, whack, or push your die onto the pinball table. When launching a die, you can move the launch pad side to side along the front edge of the pinball machine as long as the box is in contact with the other box and there's no gap. If your die stays on the board until the end of the round, it will be worth its face value in points. If it lands in or touching one of the multiplication zones, it will score its face value times that multiplier if it's still there at the end of the round. For example, three times two points. If your die lands on a clue token or any object you hit moves the clue token from its zone, you will gain that token to score at the end of the game. These are not replaced until the end of the round. They range in value from one to seven points. If your shot hits a monster, move that standee to the indicated spot on the next level down. If it's on the lowest level, move it to the upper level and track which monster you hit on the score pad. While dice that fall through holes are lost until the end of the round, if a monster falls into the hole, carefully retrieve it without moving anything on top of that box. If your die lands in the summoning circle, you'll gain an immediate bonus turn. Take one of the two dice of your color that were set aside at the beginning of the game and take another turn. You can also gain this bonus turn if you knock your own die into the summoning circle. If you knock an opponent's die into the summoning circle, they also gain a bonus turn. They will take one of their extra dice to use on their next turn. After all players have shot their four dice, score two, five, or 10 points, depending on how many monsters you hit this round, and add scores for any dice that stayed on the surface of the pinball table. Then set up for a new round by replacing clue tokens that were collected and moving the monsters back to their starting locations. Players will also go back to starting with four dice. Any dice they earn from shooting a bonus can be set aside once again. After three rounds, total up your round scores and add points from your collected clues. The player with the most points wins the game. Clearly this game is not too complex and does not need to be analyzed super deeply. It's just all about having fun and this game provides that. Those moments of laughter and joy when your friend shoots their die directly into a hole and scores no points or you pull off a really cool shot. Maybe it was skill, maybe it was luck, who's to say? If you play a lot of dexterity games, you might be familiar with tumbling dice, which has a similar concept of flicking dice down the levels, trying to keep it on the board to score its value. The thing that this game has on that, of course, is the theme. I like pinball, and that's what initially attracted me to this game as well as walls, so you can pull off really cool bank shots, and it does pack down a little bit smaller than tumbling dice would, so it doesn't take up that much space on your shelf. When it comes to the theme, there is a small mini game of hitting the monsters, but I think it's the most basic thing that they probably could have done. It looks like this is gonna be a whole series of games and there'll be different additions coming out. So I'm looking forward to what other kind of crazy mini games they can come up with. My only real complaint with the game has to do with the holes in the board. I like having them there 
for knocking other people's dice into them or having to avoid them with your own dice, but it's too easy to knock a monster into one of the holes and you need to retrieve it if it goes down there so other people can hit it. This is a little bit fiddly and awkward. You have to gently lift up the box and not bump any of the other boxes and hopefully not move any of the dice or tokens that are on the box you're lifting. It really just slows down the flow of the game. I wish there was some kind of skill shot variant rule where if you knock the monster down, that was very skillful of you and it now prevents other people from hitting that monster this round or just include multiple of each monster so that if one falls down, you can just place the other one in the next spot. But really, I don't care too much about that because I have so much fun when I'm playing this game. It's just super quick, a great way to open a game night or close a game night, and I really enjoyed this one. If you stuck around to the end here, Comment a theme that you would like to see in a future edition of Box Top Pinball, and I'll see you in the next video.